In 2017, Georgina was closing for work at a Gucci store when she met Cristiano Ronaldo for the first time. She fondly says her name is Gio, and they both describe the moment as special. Georgina says she stopped breathing for seconds, and Ronaldo describes it as a moment. She describes that Ronaldo was standing in front of her and staring, and they felt a connection as soon as their eyes met. They began talking, but nothing serious happened until months later. She was going through family issues on her part, and Ronaldo was flying from one game to another. Then a friend invites Georgina to an event, and they run into each other again. This time around, Ronaldo doesn't let her walk past him. He asks her to dinner immediately, and Gio says yes. From one dinner to another, and then she visits him for the first time. Cristiano says, he didn't fall in love with her immediately, but it happened gradually. And he reiterated that their first meeting was special. Gio talks about the paparazzi and how weird it makes her feel. Because of that, Gio doesn't travel with Chris, and she prefers to travel with her friends in his jet. Ronaldo says her backstory is similar to his. She loves to share part of her life with her friends, and it's her generosity. Her best friend Elena follows her on every trip. Elena tells us that Gio is quite simply a person, and she doesn't have a personal photographer as many would believe. Gio doesn't even edit her photos, and she is just a natural. Elena talks about the paparazzi and how it took a while to get used to them. There is also Ramon, and he is Georgina's agent. Gio said she felt a connection with him, and that's how they started working together. She then says she loves working with him. Ramon also enjoys working with Gio and teasing her. They are headed to Jean-Paul Gaultier Atelier in Paris to choose a gown for Gio for Cannes. And on board the jet, Gio says the crew is the best thing about her trips. She mentions Rebecca's cooking as a motivation for her travels, and says Rebecca makes all the dishes she likes, especially paella. In Paris, Gio finds out that it was Jean-Paul's birthday. She feels terrible and blames Ramon, who was only just letting her know. Gio enters the atelier and loves it. Elena loves the staircases the most, and the building is grand and romantic. Gio says everything in the building is a work of art, and they start checking out some dresses. The attendant shows her a dress that Lady Gaga wore before, and another cloth worn by Naomi Campbell in the early 2000s. They decide that the place is more of a museum, and Gio chooses some dresses. She tries them on, and they all fit interestingly. Back on the jet, Gio mentions that she loves to attend all her appointments in one day so that she can return to the kids. She gets down at the airport and briefly meets up with Ronaldo. She returns home to the kids just in time before it is late. At the family home in Madrid, Gio recounts how she got lost when she first got there. She says she is mastered where everything went now. In Monaco, Gio says Chris gives her access to use the boats with her friends. Her friends say things are spontaneous with Gio, like she just calls and you go. Gio is also trying to renovate the main house in Spain, and calls their interior decorator Paula, whom she trusts so well to handle it. There is furniture that she wants to sell online, since it may not fit into the smaller house, where she intends to move to. Gio spends time with Cristiano's son Junior, and helps him pack for his next game. He doesn't score a goal, but helps assist more than three goals. His team is Juventus, and he wins Milan by seven to three goals. Georgina's friend group is called the Darlings, and this name originated from her habit of calling everyone Darling. Her friend Ivan says, you can't have an agenda with Gio, and she just calls you up and you have to go. They got the text to come to Monaco from her around midnight. Her invitations happen randomly, and are always important. Gio mentions how funny it is, that her friends arrived at the yacht before her. Georgina's sister announces that she is pregnant, to the appreciation of the darlings. The friends spend time catching up on the yacht and recalling old memories, and they remember one time, when a man farted in her nose. The friends talk about Gio and the kind of person she is, and they then talk about what it means to be Georgina's friends. Meanwhile, they are constantly asked personal questions questions about Gio, and some of them find it absurd. But they comment on the paparazzi. Her friends note how gentle and tolerant she is. Although some people are worried that Gio has changed ever since she married Ronaldo. 
The friends are very sure she hasn't changed, and they want others to believe it too, and stop with the questions. Gio also comments on the paparazzi, and says it was hard for her to adjust to having a lot of people have flawed information about you, and being unable to help them. Explains she always had the urge to set people straight. But that's the only thing, you end up doing all the time, and there's life to live apart from that. The next morning, Gio is given a chain by the darlings, and she finds a neck piece that had been looking for it for more than a year. She announces that they would be going to see Ferrari before she returns and spends time with the darlings. They look towards it and are even happy that they get to spend time with Gio. Gio didn't really like the side before it became an issue. And after the meeting with Ferrari, Gio talks endlessly about fashion. After a while, the family is preparing to go on vacation. Gio is packing a few things and says she is okay with anything in location as long as Chris is there. She gets Elena to demonstrate what appearance she should get. Gio is grateful to be who she is because she never fought with him and that is enough reason for her. She feels lucky that she doesn't have to stress as much as other mothers stress to get up in the morning and take care of the kids. Ronaldo says he's thankful that he chose her and believes she's the best person for the job. Gio is still sorting out things for the small house. She is cleaning a stack of chinas and begins to talk about bits that are needed but there's no instruction. She leaves the house to attend the match between Portugal and France and goes with Junior and her friends. When they get to Budapest, Gio meets her friend Julia. Julia helps her select the gown she should wear and they all head out to see the match. Gio says she always prays for Chris as soon as she enters the stadium to watch him play. During the match, she says she feels really loved by Portugal. The game ends in a tie and Gio is proud of Chris. They leave the venue amidst imposing paparazzi. In the next scene, her kids are doing some activities with their home tutor. Gio says she hired the tutor to engage her kids when she isn't home. The tutor also helps Junior with his assignments. She doing this to stimulate her kids and inspire them. Wants them to be the best they can be, and she thinks her kids are the best. She makes them appreciate the teacher before she leaves. According to her, the kids won't see the tutor for a while since they are going on vacation. She takes them pony riding, and we see Cristiano's son Matteo. At first, Matteo is too scared to climb the pony, but he joins the fun after his sisters Eva and Alana surge forward on their ponies. In Milan, Gio and Julia are on the bus to see a friend called Eugenia. Gio talks about the jewelry that Eugenia sells and how they speak to her. She says she feels elegant with the pieces she sells, and sends Julia off on an errand, and comments on how sweet and gentle Julia is. Gio meets up with Eugenia by herself in Turin for the first time. They catch up and Gio expresses her worries about fitting. However, Eugenia assures her that she still has the sparks in her. She meets up with Julia, and they head to Roberto Cavalli for dresses. She's still looking for a gown for Cam. And the shop is filled with unique pieces so they take their time. Their first pick is a silver and gold backless gown, and Gio goes into the dressing room with Julia and tries it on. The first three gowns don't fit and they're too tight for Julia. After a while, she gives up. They offer to take her measurements, but Gio is worried that she'll add more weight from eating. She checks out some jumpsuits and gets matching ones for herself and Ronaldo. Gio says she doesn't buy a lot of clothes, but the do she buys are of good quality. It's time to pay, and the attendant tells her everything she got. However, they give her all the items in the house. She is shocked and feels remorseful for buying a lot. She appreciates them, and says that even though they're rich, they appreciate gestures like that. In the next scene, Gio has arrived for a photo shoot at a brand's location, and says Ramon takes care of everything that has to do with brands. She is impressed with her work ethics, and and says she does something perfectly when she puts her mind to it. Thinks she's a trendsetter since most of the things she wears sell out fast. Still looking for that dress, she meets Ollie, an old friend who makes clothes. Says she has worn his dress for an award ceremony in 2018. She describes what she wants from him and he draws some designs. She settles for a green design and tries on a red dress. And everyone loves the look on her. It's time for the big game between Portugal and Belgium in Sevilla. 
Gio is heading to the venue with friends and Junior. She tries to sing and stops halfway, but Elena encourages her to sing at the top of her voice, regardless of how she sounds. While they're having dinner in Seville, we then introduce to a friend of Gio and Chris named Edu. He recounts his promise a year ago to bring a band called Los Rebugidos to sing at a party in Portugal when Chris was present. The band didn't show up then, but they walked in just as he was talking, and Edu is ecstatic that he has fulfilled his wish to bring the band to their hangout. The party heads to the porch and settles in to listen to the band. They enjoy a time of music and laughter, and Gio even takes the stage to sing along. On match day, the atmosphere is tense. Gio is nervous and wants Chris to win. However, things don't turn out as they expect. Portugal loses to Belgium, scoring no goal at all. Junior is hurt and Gio tries to placate him. Cristiano says he felt bad when he saw Junior crying, but he was also assured that the lad felt something only true players would feel. Gio encourages Junior to stay strong and cheer his dad up, then they go on vacation in Majorca. She is thrilled about this location and thinks it has the best waters in Europe. Ronaldo says he loves vacations because he gets to do anything he loves, and he spends time with family and friends. Gio describes the house design, and especially likes the fact that the pool is a bit farther from the house, so that the kids don't wake them up when they sleep. They enjoy quality time alone for two days, before their friends come around. The D-Day for Gio finally arrives, the Cannes International Film Festival. Gio interrupts her holiday to get to work, and says she doesn't mind doing it. Ramon arrives with cucumbers, while she's having a massage. Gio says she doesn't get good sleep the night before an event. She then says the cucumbers were pretty expensive. She got half a cucumber for 4 euros. So she ate the leftovers of the cucumbers after using them on her eyes. She then tries on her dresses, but Ramon insists that she were the one from Jean-Paul Gaultier even when Gio is considering Ali's dress, and they both disagree about what dress she should wear. The tension in the room heightens when Gio says Chris preferred the green one, however, Gio goes with Ramon's choice in the end. According to her, it looked the best with her hairdo. Gio makes it back in time to have that special dinner with Chris, and she sets up a surprise party to reveal the gender of her sister's baby. Her her sister says she didn't let the technician tell her the gender at the lab, because she wanted to find out from someone special to her. Gio wants them to place a bet on what gender the baby will be, and she says she doesn't have to participate in the bet though. They share a toast to the baby. Then Gio presents a surprise gift to her and makes her open it. In the box, there's a girl's shoes. Georgina's sister is going to have a baby girl, and she is overjoyed and starts tearing up. Gio assures her that her life would change now that she was going to have kids, and says she is going to have absolute joy as a mom, and she'd never stop worrying. Also gives her a rivery, a necklace her sister has always wanted. The night then is filled with love and hugs. Gio is back in Spain, after many years, she takes a tour down memory lane, visiting familiar places with her sister. The first stop is the Citadel, and from there they can see the entire city. Georgina feels nostalgia, instead of getting excited as she expected. And her sister shares the same feelings with her, and says it feels like she is a little girl again, like all the new life she has doesn't exist. They spot a house Gio wanted to own in her childhood, and share a laugh. They walk down the streets, and Gio is surprised by the paparazzi. She wasn't expecting anyone down here to recognize her. She then meets some of her old acquaintances as she walks on, and admits that the town hasn't changed one bit. They talk about a lot of things, and make their first stop at the restaurant Biarritz, a place Gio had dreamt of going to. Georgina's sister says they were only ever able to enter thanks to baller classes, and they talk about Gio being the school troublemaker. She never wanted to go to school, because Gio admits that she was scared of the nuns, so she refused to go to school. She visits a candy store and admits that she'll never stop liking candies, and buys some more candies for the kids. They make a stop at the ballet class and catch up with their old teacher. A former ballet classmate of Gio called Sarah, arrives and shares a dance with Gio. Her sister tells us that Gio is very stubborn, as she is affectionate. Gio talks about Madrid a lot, and how she was certain that her life would be great. In Madrid, we see the hotel she worked at, that called Lilda. The owner is still around, and opens the place to welcome Gio. Gio explains that they're closed due to Covid, and she meets the paparazzi again. After a while, 
She visits a meat shop where they sell different kinds of steaks she loves. She finds the one she likes and buys a lot of it. She shares them in different locations to be sent to their different homes. Gio tells us how she would walk for long hours in the dark all alone. And because she was worried, she would call her mom or sister all the way home. Gio takes us to the apartment she stayed in Madrid. She remembers Mrs. Carmen, her neighbor who helped her when she was really distraught. Gio says she felt dizzy and teary-eyed one day and didn't have any money. So she knocked on Mrs. Carmen's door and pleaded for a plate of rice and fried eggs. She says Mrs. Carmen made the food quickly and since then Gio valued her. She visits the church next and it is the place she ran to most times in Madrid. Explains that she is very religious and how being there gives her peace. She says she has always felt God's presence in her life like he has always been by her side. Back at the family house in Madrid, Gio wraps gifts for the children. She calls Chris and asks him to get ready in 20 minutes. It seems they're planning to have a video call and Gio arrives at a home for kids from broken homes. And it is a place she and Chris donate to. However, Gio believes it is better to spend time with the kids even as you donate. She hands the kids their gifts and the smiles and happy laughter all melt her heart. She goes from room to room listening to their stories and looking at their drawings. While reading one particular letter, Gio breaks down in tears. She is unable to continue reading it, so someone else has to help read it instead. Gio reads more letters while holding back tears. The kids are inspired by her and they think she is a selfless person and an amazing mother. Gio is thankful for their kind thoughts and presents them with her last gift for the day. A video call with Chris and the kids are overjoyed and excited. Some of them record the moment with their phone while others just take it in. And Chris promises to visit them one day with Gio. Gio leaves the kids with plenty of hugs and kisses. The family is moving out of the house in Italy. Gio is sad about it and hopes she doesn't have to completely leave. Ronaldo says he's been used to changes since he was 18, because nothing is permanent in sports and things change every day. Gio receives a call from Ramon, and according to the conversation, James Balvin has agreed to work on her first project. She's ecstatic, and thinks it's a dream come true. She says she met Balvin at one of Chris' parties four years ago, then she plays one of his songs and continues swimming. Then Gio goes shopping for presents for Junior's birthday. She says she likes getting him clothes, because they're the things he uses the most. She selects some sweats and t-shirts for him, before straying into the women's section, and admits that she loves shopping and having nice things in her closet. She spots rings that she likes and picks a few of them. And when she's leaving, she jokingly tells her group that she came to get presents. But she is leaving with half of the store. Gio takes the little ones to go bake a cake together for Junior. They get to Andrea, the pastry chef for Gio in Madrid. The kids get ready and start baking, and Gio likes making healthy cakes for the kids. And she's particular about everything they eat. The D-Day arrives, and Gio takes the kids and her friends to a theme park in Madrid that opened just for them. Her friends commend her efforts as a mom and are glad to enjoy their time. After they ride the slides, Junior says he is not getting on another one. Meanwhile, Gio receives a call and says she's coming to get them in. She says she used to work as an au pair in Bristol in 2015 and she took care of twin girls then. And she always invites the girls to her children's birthdays. She introduces the girls to her kids again and they become friends. Gio says she first learned to be a mom while taking care of the twins in Bristol and learned to take care of kids with the twins. They present the cake and Junior is surprised to learn that the little ones baked it and he shares a kiss with all of them. Then he gets his presents and he looks very happy with all of them. Georgina's friends are proud of her, especially for her attentiveness as a mother. She is the administrator of Insperia, Chris Hair Treatment Clinic. It's one of the many businesses he owns and she helps him with. She gets her hair treated at the clinic and is impressed by the nurse's skill with the needle. Ronaldo says he values her opinion concerning every business he owns and says she's very business-minded and it helps a lot. The darlings are together again in Spain. 
two chefs place a wide pot of rice on the table, and the guests are thrilled. Gio announces that she would be receiving an award later that night, and she would be wearing Ali's gown. It is also Ivan's birthday, so she gives him a gift, it's a polo and then she gives him a diamond ring. He is overjoyed, and shares a hug with all of them. At the Starlight Awards, Georgina is asked to address the crowd after the awards. And she dedicates it to everyone that loves her, because they motivate her to give. She is asked to stay behind, and sing a song with Beret. Gio feels honored to share the same stage with him. She's on a video call with Balvin, and she shares her dreams of working together with him. The change they've been expecting finally comes, when Chris transfers to the Premier League, and they move to Europe. Georgina is happy that people get to know her for who she is now, and not just being Chris' girlfriend. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you in the next video. All this money, money.